everybody, and welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where, fuck you, you already know the fucking intro. Yeah, you've been here long enough to know. It's not like I'm getting new fucking listeners here. And you know what? If I offended you just now, you know what would really get in my craw? You know how you could really stick it to me? By going over to fucking iTunes and giving this stupid podcast five stars. Ooh, that would make me mad. That would just really fucking piss me off. You know, and if you're watching this or listening to this on the YouTubes, oh man, a thumbs up, that would really fucking get me fucking angry. And you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. So yeah, so let's just be real here. The only true way to piss me off is to go tell all your friends about this show. Tell your fucking friends to come listen to this bullshit. That would fucking make me so mad. I'd be so sick to death of you if you did that. God damn it. Now you might be going, oh, you're being really funny, huh? No, I'm doing this because this is how the poetry industry works. They want to be obscure. They want no one to ever know about them. They want, like, confusion around their popularity or lack thereof. So, yeah, I'm a part of the poetry community. So, definitely, the last thing I would want is for you to fucking tell anybody about this. Jesus Christ. So, now that that sarcasm was laid on thicker than thighs, whom I enjoy looking at quite a lot. For those of you who like this show, go ahead and uh, give me five stars on iTunes, just because you like it. You could leave a review, too, if you want. And if you're watching this on the tubes, make that thumb go north, my friend. North! Okay? That's cool. We could do that. Fuck, the coffee is finally kicking the fuck in. God damn, dude. It has been a fucking rough morning to try to wake up. And this motherfucker... It's like, oh shit, I tried to open my car without fucking unlocking it. Now I don't know what button it is to put... Ah! Fucking douchebag. Okay, and I'm sorry about that. I know everyone probably hates that. It's like... It's like listening to their grandparents bone in the next room, dude. Fuck. Sorry. I'm I'm a big fucking dude. I'm thick and beefy, like the best beef jerky around. And I have a heavy upper body. And when I lean on this fucking thing, it's like, whoa, dude. Back the fuck off. But if I push down really hard, it runs out of creaks. And so then I just have to hold myself there. So one of these days, I'm going to be doing this podcast. And you're going to hear a fucking disastrous crash. And it will be me falling through my desk, onto my face, onto the keyboard. And hopefully, my beautiful little MacBook here will not die. I can't handle another MacBook death. Touch wood. Fuck me. Oh, yeah. Let me get out my notes. Because I have fucking notes. I have notes, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what else you can do? If you are not seeing my face, if you are not looking at the majestic beard that I wear or the luscious flowing locks that grow hither forth too from my scalp, um, then you need to go over to YouTube and hit the join button and for just two ninety nine a month, whenever I do a podcast, you can actually gaze upon my beauty instead of just listening to my sexy, sexy voice in your earbuds. ASMR heaven right here. Or you could join the um, Anarchy Crew and do the Poetic Anarchy course. Um, that's been going really well. There's over 70 videos there if you want to take part in hone your craft and be a badass mamma jamma a big swinging dick or you could go over to patreon if you like my work and you want more of my work if you want to support my art you can go do that but first let's do the Uh, 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 uh. 
the fucking badass motherfucking crew shout outs am i right so here we go let's hit the patreon fuckers first here i want to give a big thank you to michael deborah cedar harry and then if we go over to the crew we have big thank yous to nate to bunny to mindy to thomas to tim to lisa and to josh and finally to patrick thank you guys so much for supporting me here thank you so much for believing in what i do and i fucking hope to god that the things i do here are benefiting you in some way with that said um let's get into the main show Matt Wall, poet extraordinaire, poet at large, or just large poet. Either way, I'm still breaking this desk. Um, so I have a question, and this question runs deep, like still waters, okay? Why the fuck are poets so motherfucking slow? I have never in my fucking life had to endure the fucking sloth-like nature of fucking other poets. I've done it all, dude. I've been in bands. I've ran fucking record labels. I've fucking had production companies. I've fucking done film. I've fucking done, um, I'm sure I've done other shit. Worked with fucking actors. For fuck's sake. I, I fucking ran fiction workshops, serial workshops. I've worked I've written books with other authors. Never in my goddamn fucking life have I come across a whole community of people whose like top speed is almost backwards. Okay, and for a while, I'm like, maybe it's just me and I am very off putting because I know I come off a bit on the harsh side because I don't have fucking time. I don't have fucking patience to be doing shit. I don't have time to fucking sugarcoat stuff and kid glove motherfuckers to death. I got to get right to the fucking thing because I got shit to do. I got fucking books to put out. I got books to fucking write. I got fucking shit to do. These fucking poets are just so fucking nonchalant. But like, yeah, so I thought it was me. Like, there there are poets who I'm trying to get to submit to magazines I do or websites I do. I tell people, I'm like, yeah, submit some stuff. I would love to have your stuff. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Nothing, nothing, hear nothing, hear nothing, hear nothing. There have been poets whose work I think is fucking brilliant and I want to put their book out. And they're like, okay, I'll send you over my manuscript. Nothing, I hear nothing for months, okay? And again, I'm like, if this is just me and people don't like me, I would rather them just say, you know what? I'd rather not fucking do anything with you because you're kind of a psychopath. I would be way more fucking happy with that. I'd go, dude, thank you so much for being fucking honest with me. Let's make out and high five. Good job. I appreciate you. Then there were like people I was talking to through poetry podcasts I was listening to. Sometimes they get back to me right away, but most of the time they don't. I send fucking emails. I fucking wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. By the time I get the email back, I don't even know what the fuck I was talking to them about anymore. And then I have to read the whole fucking email chain in order to figure out why this person is saying this shit to me in the first place. Sometimes the email is so fucking old that when they respond to it, they're not even responding to the things I fucking said in the email that I sent. And then again, I'm like, maybe it's just me. Okay? But it isn't the fucking case. So then I started listening to other podcasts. And um, there's this one podcast called... Uh, commonplace it's allegedly a very popular famous podcast 
and I'm not like talking shit on it here. I'm telling you exactly the things that I have heard on the show. The show is scripted, which is obviously scripted. And some people might be okay with that. It just, it sounds scripted. Okay, whatever. That's a personal preference thing. But I listened to a couple episodes of it, or tried to anyway. And the host is like, um, part of this interview um, was recorded in 2019 when I was on top of a mountain um, going to go skydiving with some other poet friends and blah, 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 blah. And then the second portion of this interview was recorded in 2021 over um, a steak dinner in a fancy restaurant on the moon. And it's like, oh my God, like you've been trying to put this episode together for fucking, what, four fucking years, three years? What? Huh? And then like, um, I don't know, like just everyone is so fucking slow. And a lot of these fucking poets are completely content with only having a book of their poetry come out every 10 years. So, like, what, like, by the time they're dead, there'll be, like, 150 pages of their life's work? Like, what the fuck? I, I don't understand. When you become a poet, do you think that the world moves slower? Like, do you think that time is on your side? Like, do you think that, like, there's enough time for everything? Because there's not. Time waits for no one. It is coming for you. Every time you dilly-dally, guess what time's doing? Ticking. Time don't give a fuck. Time doesn't give a fuck about you, and time doesn't give a fuck about poetry. But I just, it's the most bizarre thing on the fucking planet that everyone in this community, no matter where you live on the world, being the tortoise is completely acceptable and almost expected. I've never understood it. So um, if you have noticed this, or if you are a proponent of being the tortoise and not the hare, um, let me know. Because there's a part of me that thinks the person who wrote the tortoise and the hare was just trying to validate themselves to everyone who said, you're a slow ass fucker, get to it, get to it, go, 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 go. Last night, I went to a workshop, a virtual workshop, that was um, ran by Dimitri Reyes, who is just a fucking amazing fucking dude. I love that fucking guy. Um, I will leave a link to his site somewhere. But um, it had been a really long time since I had done anything like that. A lot of people, you know, dig that shit. Like, I was just doing videos about workshops and everything like that. So I kind of wanted to see how the other half lived. And I will say this. Going to it, like, and looking at it as a type of social interaction going at it with that mindset, like it made me look at it differently because a lot of the people there seemed really cool and um, they all had like awesome things to say and some of the poetry they shared was great. And um, so looking at it from that aspect, instead of looking at it as what are you going to get out of this, is, is it's very different. It's very different. So um, I don't know how often I would go to workshops. I would definitely go to a workshop Dimitri was doing. Um, he, was, he was a great host and made I think he made everyone feel fucking comfortable as shit. So that was cool. Now, one of the things that went down at this workshop was Dimitri read a poem that he saw a bunch of people talking about on Reddit. And the poem has actually been out for a while. I thought it was more of a newer thing because I had never heard it. Um, and it's a poem called First Kiss 
by Tim Seibels. I was looking for like a version of the reading that you could actually hear that wasn't like from a, a mega corporation type entity. Um, and I couldn't find one. So I'm going to have to fucking read this thing. <sighs> so I'm going to read this and um, you just sit back and enjoy. It is called, and I'm not going to read it how he reads it. And the way Dimitri read it was actually really, really good, but I'm not going to, I, I'm, yeah. So this is called First Kiss and it is Four Lips. Her mouth fell into my mouth like a summer snow, like a fifth season, like a fresh Eden, like Eden when Eve made God. Whimper with the liquid, tilt of her hips. Her kiss hurt like that. I mean, it was as if she mixed the sweat of an angel with the taste of a tangerine. I swear, my mouth had been a helmet forever, greased with secrets. My mouth, a dead end street, a little bit lit by teeth. My heart, a clam, slammed shut at the bottom of a dark, but her mouth pulled up like a baby blue Cadillac, packed with canaries, driven by a toucan. I swear, those lips said bright wings when we kissed, wild and precise as if she were teaching a seahorse to speak. Her mouth so careful, chumming, the first vowel from my throat until my brain was a piano, banged loud, hammered like that. It was like, I swear, her tongue was Saturn's seventh moon, hot like that, hot and cold, encircling, circling, turning me into a glad planet. Sun on one side, night pouring her slow hand over the other, one fire flying the kite of another, her kiss, I swear, if the great mother rushed open the moon like a gift and you were there to feel your shadow finally unhooked from your wrist, that'd be it. But even sweeter, like a riot of peg-legged priests on pogo sticks, up and up. This way and this, not falling but on and on, like that. Badly behaved but holy, I swear. That kiss, both lips, utterly committed to the world like a Peace Corps, like a free store, forever and always, a new city, no locks, no walls, just doors, like that, I swear, like that. Whew. Kind of jumbled that up a little bit there. I think you get the idea. So basically, um, I need a fucking cigarette. Jesus fucking Christ. I'll be back. All right. Here I am. Oh. Fuck me, dude. Got my smoke. I got a cup of coffee. Did not put brandy in it for some stupid fucking reason. Seems like I would need it for this, but we're gonna we're gonna press on. So what happened was, um, Dimitri read this poem. And everyone started talking about, like, things they liked about the poem and, like, what they thought of the poem. And most people liked it. And um, that's cool. And like I say all the time, every poem out there is someone's favorite poem. Like, not every poem is written for every fucking person. And they don't have to be. I did not like this poem. And those of you who know me probably know why I didn't like this poem, but you'd be wrong. There's more reasons why I don't like this poem. So here is my take. I'm not going to sit here and say what everyone else's take was because you can fucking go on Reddit and see what everyone's take on this fucking poem is. But here's the thing. So we're going to start right from the beginning. Her mouth fell into my mouth like a summer snow. Summer snow probably doesn't exist. Like a fifth season. There isn't a fifth season. Um, like a fresh Eden, which there's not. Like Eden when Eve made God, which is obviously not the Bible myth. Okay? So right off the bat, he is telling you that her mouth fell into his mouth 
like all of these things that never happened. Her mouth fell into his mouth, and then he lies. Her mouth fell into my mouth like lie, 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 lie. So what this tells me is that this never fucking happened. And the guy who wrote this, I think when he wrote this, he was in his 50s. Maybe his 50s. But this poem comes across like a fucking 14-year-old freshman in high school trying to convince his friends that he hooked up with some chick. But what he is doing here is telling us how full of shit he is. Okay? Now, another thing that really bothered me, it says, um, I mean, it was as if she mixed the sweat of an angel with the taste of a tangerine. Now, to me, if you ever have to say I mean in a poem, that means you fucked up. That means your metaphors aren't working. If you as the poet realize that the things you're saying are not coming across, you fucked up. Right there. Like, you need to stop. Put the pen down, go for a walk. Do something else. Now, if this whole poem is more about a 14-year-old boy trying to convince his friends that he scored with some chick, I could see him saying, look, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, believe me, please. Like, I mean, like, and I get that. That's cool. But just for future reference to any writer out there, if you write I mean in something, you fucked up, stop. Don't do metaphors anymore. Ditch them for six months and just write real fucking shit until you feel like your metaphors aren't ridiculous things that don't exist. Okay, let's keep going here. So his mouth had been a helmet forever greased with secrets. So he swallowed her head and the secrets were greased. The greasy secrets made her head slide into his head. Whatever. Um, but now his mouth is a dead end street. And it's lit by teeth. Okay, that makes sense on a metaphor level a bit. Um, his heart's a clam and it's slammed shut at the bottom of a dark. Okay. But her mouth pulled up like a baby blue Cadillac packed with canaries driven by a toucan. I swear those lips said bright wings when we kissed. Okay, basically here, He's saying anything. I can say her lips, tall buildings, roller coasters, poop slide. Okay? You can fucking say anything. And if you are a poet laureate of some fucking state, you can put something out like this and have hundreds of people online talking about how fucking genius you are. Okay? So this goes on and on and on. Um, and, you know, Saturn's seventh moon, hot like that. Moons aren't hot. Like, what the fuck? Keep going. Let's, let's keep going through this. Oh, you know, like a riot of peg-legged priests on pogo sticks. Can you imagine what that would be like? They wouldn't go up and up. They would fucking fall down flat on their face. None of this is true. And he keeps saying, I swear, I swear. I swear, like that, like that, I swear. Okay, this could be two things. One, he could be, okay, well, it could be three things. One, his metaphors are so shit and he is so into his own celebrity that he thinks he did something genius here. I doubt that's what this is. Two, he is completely fucking with the whole poetry community. He knows this is stupid. He knows this is a lie. He knows that he, as a narrator of this poem, or the narrator, whoever it is, like the literary eye, is such an unreliable narrator that he knew everyone would think this was beautiful and just fucking so awesome, but he's sitting here telling you every fucking lie there is. And he's fucking at home 
laughing at you all right now for thinking that this is fucking brilliant. Or he's nuts, I guess would be the third thing. I would like to believe that he's fucking been pulling a big fucking joke on you all. That's what that's what my hope would be. But, you know, whatever. Um, so th- it's just after re- first time reading this yesterday, I, I said to myself, I'm like, I could never trust this guy again as a poet because he just fucking totally lied to me. Now, after reading it a couple times, I'm sitting here going, okay, well, if his whole thing was this being a lie from a 14-year-old kid, then I get it, and I can trust him a little bit more. But these metaphors are so fucking awful and mean absolutely nothing that it's, it's really frustrating. And guys, make your metaphors fucking mean something, dude. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If your metaphor doesn't connect to make sense, the reason why metaphors exist is to make it easier to explain something to someone else. Like if they don't understand what you're saying and you're like, it's like this or um, the coffee cup of my soul, like whatever. Like when you say things like that, you're like, oh, that coffee cup means a lot to him then. Like I understand that now. Um, So whenever things like this happen, metaphors are there not to make things more confusing and not to make things sound stupid. They exist to help you make someone else understand what you're saying and what you're feeling. Fucking hell, dude. But no, dude, you, you get a celebrity poet saying all sorts of bullshit that doesn't mean anything. And whatever. And then someone might go, well, it might mean something to him. He might understand what that means. Okay, good. Write a journal. Don't be a fucking poet. If you want to write weird fucking, um, I don't know, some weird fucking shit that doesn't make any fucking sense, but only to you, then keep it to your fucking self. Don't go spreading this shit out. Because, again, this is why people do not like poetry. This is why people think poetry is inaccessible. Because people think, in reading this, that they're not smart enough to understand what's going on because there are so many other douchebags out there who say they understand this and they will talk about what all these things mean. This is all lies. And I think Tim knows it. I think he fucking knows it. Um, I, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to like look up and see if he's like talked about this at all. And... Um, I found an interview of him and the first question was, how do you come up with such great metaphors? And I was like, oh, journalistic integrity is out the fucking window. Fuck me, dude. So I'm like, okay, uh, um, let's see what he says. And he doesn't back off from it. And he's like, you know, like once you've been writing for so long, you just start coming up with words and he just said some other shit and but like but he was all on board he likes the smell of his own farts he's he's in like and i'm just like god damn it dude i thought for sure this guy would be going like you know what i'm fucking with all of you i'm pulling the wool over all your fucking eyes you idiots and he didn't fucking say that he was like yes rain the praise on me so god damn it another one bites the dust man make your fucking metaphors mean something Say what you mean, mean what you say, and I'm done. Yeah, and I totally forgot. The whole reason why this came up was because the writing prompt that um, Dimitri wanted all of us to do was um, to write about our first kiss. And I did that, so let me share it with you here. It's called First Kiss, shocker. We were in the giant tire in the sandbox, Kara had a mustache made out of orange juice. It tasted like nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Other boys found us, made fun of us, got the teacher. I was forced inside, sat in the corner, in the dark. They called my mom, but I had done it. It was worth it. And that is my first kiss poem. Now... I'm not saying my poem 
is better than anyone else's poem about the subject. Actually, I am saying that. That is the best poem on the subject. So with that said, we can move on. Okay, let me talk about the videos that I posted this week. I posted, um, since the last podcast episode, I posted a video on how to, how to not hate what you write if you hate yourself. And this goes into a lot of the whole idea of um, writing as therapy kind of stuff and ways around that. I'm not going to go into much detail on it here, but if you, I'll leave a link for the video down below if you are interested in that or if you suffer from depression or anything of that nature. And then the other one, the other video I did, it has a lot to do with first thought, best thought, and how to make that work for you. And it's called, uh, Who Are You Writing For? So um, take a look at that if you struggle with first thought, best thought, and that'll be there for you there. Um, and then also, um, Poetic Anarchy, what we've been going over this week, and again, you can come in at any time, um, it's work at your own pace. This week we've gone over putting together your poetry manuscript, or your book manuscript for that matter. How to do it, like some things to avoid, some things to jump on. And then we also went over why it's important to have your own website and your own online presence and why it's important to have a mailing list and things of that nature. And then the rest of this week is going to be me going over the um, poems from the one night exercise that we did where we all got together on Zoom and wrote as many poems as we could in one night. And um, that was a fucking shit ton of fun. And the poems that came out of that were fucking hysterical and loving all of them. Um, some of them were pretty dark, but a lot of them were fucking great. And maybe next time I will share my favorite poem that came out of that whole fucking thing. Because that was a, a just amazing time. Okay, so now I'm going into the part of the show where I insert plugs. So first off, if you go to my website, IHateMattWall.com, there, there is a way to get a free ebook from me that has a shit ton of my poetry and some of my short stories in there. So go sign up for the mailing list, and then that way you get um, news about everything I'm doing. Sometimes I send out uh, my Spotify playlist that I'm listening to because I change those all the fucking time. And um, just talk about cool shit, and sometimes I even send you discount codes to pick up some of my stuff too if you're into that kind of thing. Another thing I'm doing that I have been doing, but I'm thinking about actually just doing it, doing it now. Um, but for the last, fuck, like 10 years off and on, I've been doing mentorship programs with people where um, I help them kind of figure out what to put together to build their career. Like what goals to set, how to achieve these goals, what things we need to do to get you to the place you want to get to. I did this a lot when I was doing filmmaking. I was working with producers and directors all the fucking time doing that. I was also doing it with bands back in the day. Um, but And also, I was doing it a lot with uh, people who were writing serialized fiction. I was helping them out with that quite a bit. So um, I started doing this with poetry since I've been doing it with everything else I've ever done my whole life. And it's been going really fucking great. So if you are interested in doing um, a mentorship session with me, it's completely different than the Poetic Anarchy thing because the Poetic Anarchy thing is you learning shit and you doing shit. Whereas the mentorship thing is me helping you do the shit. And me like kind of holding your hand and walking you through it. You know what I'm saying? So if any of that sounds like something you're interested in, if, if you go to IHateMattWall.com, um, it's in the menu bar right there, mentorship. I think it's actually IHateMattWall.com slash mentorship. And you can find out more about it there if you're interested. Blood Rag, issue four, out now. Taking submissions for issue five which comes out around the 1st of November. Um, I know I'm cutting it kind of close, but that's how I fucking do shit because I'm not a slow-ass fucking poet. I get shit fucking done. I am not a sloth. 
I am a fucking cheetah. God damn it. Um, again, my chat books you can pick up at my Etsy shop um, with the blood rag. Um, I have books on Amazon, um, ebooks and paperback books, like Fingering the Mundane and The End of Everything if you're into the poetry thing. Um, and also the Poetic Anarchy books, Volume 1 and Volume 2 are out now, and Volume 3 comes out next month. Um, and then also I'm doing, um, I don't know if we talked about this on the last episode, but I've already put up the first three episodes of my Kindle Vela serial called Horrywood, which is uh, basically a true account, 99% true, of my life making movies in Hollywood, Hollyweird. And it's kind of um, raunchy because I was an indie horror filmmaker. If you're interested in filmmaking, um, it's very helpful. And if you're into smutty shit, you will love this. So there's that. Um, you can get my music anywhere. Um, music is streamed. So YouTube music, iTunes, Amazon, Prime, um, Prime Music, if that's what it's called, Google Play or whatever that's called. Um, Spotify, Pandora, um, you could put my songs on your fucking reels and on your Snapchats and on your TikToks and your uh, gooks and all sorts of other shit. Um, I'm actually going to be starting to like really push my art and sell my paintings and shit like that. Um, I've sold a couple and it's really, it's hard for me. I get like... Oh no, do I want to sell my babies? But um, it's why you fucking do shit, right? So there's that. Um, so if you liked anything that I said in this episode and you want to tell me how much you liked it, you can send me an email at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. If you think I'm a bastard and just a piece of shit and a motherfucker and you want to tell me just how fucking stupid you think I am and how fucking um, Neanderthalish and barbaric that my views on poetry are, go ahead and send me that little email at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. I'm not going to come at you, bro. It's fine. Everything's good here. If you would like to be a guest, if you would like, because I'm going to start um, having interviews with people again on this fucking bad mama jamma. If you would like to be a guest and talk about shit with me, go ahead and send me an email. It's IHateMattWall at gmail.com. Or if you want me to teach a workshop for you, if you're a part of some organization that um, has a .org instead of a .com at the end of their website, hit me up and let me know. Okay, 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 okay. With all that said... Um, I hope you enjoyed yourself here. Oh, you know what? Let me give you guys a writing prompt before I go. A writing prompt. What's a good prompt? Oh, I should put it, probably put the prompt up on the Anarchy Crew. Oh, I should talk about that real quick. So I'm sitting here editing this podcast episode, and I realized right after I said, let me give you a writing prompt, that I didn't give you a writing prompt. So your writing prompt for today is breaking furniture. The first thought that came to your mind, what was it? Write it out. Right before I go, listen, listen, don't go to work. Don't, ah, stop! The Anarchy Crew, right now, is $9.99 a month to be a part of that. It's going up November 1st. So, if you want in the Anarchy Crew, and you don't want to pay the higher price, and you want to be grandfathered in, you have to sign up before the first, okay? And this is what you get. You get basically three videos a week of lessons. You get an interactive members-only live stream, where we talk about our work and stuff like that. You get daily writing prompts. You get a huge discount on all of my shit. Um, and you get to be put in the Poetic Anarchy paperbacks when those come out. And you get to be a part of cool ass fucking things like the one night stream we did. You know, like it's a really fucking cool thing. The community's fucking awesome. Everybody loves each other. It's a big fucking word orgy. It's great. All sorts of orgasms. So anyway, if you're into that shit, 
go ahead and do that thing and um, just keep buying my books, everybody, and type fucking hard. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.